Hello and welcome to my latest video. This one's called Happy Arthur. It's a tribute to my late father-in-law who back in the 50s drove a truck just like this delivering galvanised wire all around North Wales. The truck we've got is a Bedford Dinky Soup Toys Arctic. In pretty ropey condition. Been over painted and well play worn over the years. I'm just taking it a bit, it's a fairly simple to get the cab section open. The wheels just lift off. A little bit more difficult with removing the uh, articulated section. You just pull the pin out here and the cab lifts off. But then you're left with this riveted joint, which subsequent to a uh, bit of work with the Dremel just ground the head off the rivet and the next thing they were all in the bath getting the paint stripped off so got a white primer later and we're off with a, the first of the top coats this for those that are interested is Crytex Carmine Red You can see we've got the cab section mask off because I'm going for a two-tone paint scheme here with this one. As usual format, just building things up in nice light coats and spraying at 40 psi. Just a finishing covering coat here. And we'll dry that out with the heat gun. And onto the first coat on the end trailer section. Again it's the Createx Carmine Red. Tricky with all the nooks and crannies on the chassis and what have you here but most coats flash it off with the heat gun between uh, the chain coats and eventually we get it all nice and covered. I did endeavour to find out what the actual livery was for the company that uh, that uh, father-in-law worked for, but unfortunately I had to make it a best guess. So we're going for a nice green and red livery. And the usual deal, nice light coats. This one's a home brew colour. I think it's a combination of forest green, a bit of yellow and a bit of white, just to get the kind of apple green colour I was looking for. And onto the second coat on the cab, having uh, masked off the red section you saw us painting earlier. Nice little truck, this Bradford. I think there's several variants in it. I've seen a dust cart version, a tipper version, and a rigid lorry version. I'm now applying a coat of Intercoat Clear. This is so that I can pick it up, move it around, and generally maul with it before I put the top coat on. Um, it saves waiting forever and a day while the uh, a lack of dries or risking scratching your paint when you later on I come to put some water slide decals on. I find it helps. It dries very quickly. Within within five minutes of completing this, I can pick it up, do anything I like with it pretty much really. Strip the paint off and you can see the two-tone paint job coming together on the truck now. And again, same story, Intercode Clear is going on there. It's another step and I know a lot of people like to use their flick cans and get it all over in one hit, but I don't mind taking any extra time. I think it pays off for me in the long run. It 
But you can see a small bit of a gloss on the on the picture, but actually dries to a matte finish when uh, when it's dried off with a heat gun afterwards. Yeah, just giving it a quick flash off of there, draw you've seen me do it many times. I'm assembling now some miniature bits of rolls of wire because Barnard's the company that he delivered for in the business of driven, dr delivering agricultural fencing to uh, farms all over the place. And he frequently had large rolls of galvanised wire, fencing posts and obviously the lacing wire. So speeded up the process here just to give you a bit of an idea of uh, what's going on curling some galvanized wire around the paint pen there just to make some bales of wire up for the load just tapped myself in the finger a couple of times got some authentic blood on the uh, on the wire baling it up so it will spring open on me I don't want the load looking like a busted sofa when I'm doing the uh, big reveal at the end. And my uh, me fake fencing posts. Probably recognise them as barbecue skewers. But they scaled up really quite nicely for uh, the size that I was going for. Snip, bundling them up, snipping them off. I'm going to quick go in the uh, Aldi voice for the jeweler's saw. I wish I could saw this quick in real life, I tell you. And there we go. All the bundled up nicely. If you're enjoying the video and like what I'm doing, Please consider subscribing to the channel, it would be most helpful. Really appreciate your comments. Alright, next up I'm going to put some water slide decals onto the doors. These are some that I made up myself. The company was called Barnards. The telephone number that I put on the side is a, a fictitious one, however. I'm using Microsol um, as an adhesive gum fixer. Uh, it also softens up the decals and helps them take the shape of the doors particularly well. Not so important on a smooth surface like this, but I also put them on the trailer which is kind of made up of uh, many ridges and planks and it helps them lie down really, really well. This particular, is, uh, particular one's a combination of Microsol and Tears because I up tipped the bottle whilst I was doing this process and at five quid a bottle there were quite a few tears mixed in with this, I can assure you. So it does lay them down quite nice and flat. And just applying some on the top. Takes the shape of the mud guard and what have you quite well, because as I say, they are homemade decals, they're not, uh, they're not bought ones, so uh, I have to cut them to fit myself. Reasonably be happy with that one. And on to the other side. Probably should use the brush more than the finger for moving them about, but these must. wrapping it around that like kind of difficult crinkly bit around the mud guard comes out quite satisfactorily and even though this particular model comes with that glass I couldn't resist cutting some plastic card and popping it in I think it just finishes it off a little bit and since it's pretty much a custom anyway 
and uh, I have no intention of uh, trying to resell it or anything like that. I just did it to uh, to suit my taste, and I, I like the windows in it. There we go. Oh, pretty pleased with those all around. I'm going to stop admiring your work now and get on with it. So I think it's a largely red truck and we've had a new opening logo. I thought I'd go with the red velvet. Apart from the, as opposed to the black velvet you're all fairly familiar with by now. First order of business is to uh, assemble the articulated section. Presses on over the rivet that I ground out earlier. I pre drilled this to accept a, a replacement rivet, rivet that I super glue into place. There's just um, the glue going in, and then there's a little brass bush. And really, I suppose at this point, so it serves no purpose, but I just wanted to put it back where it came from for kind of continuity. Fiddle the rivet into place with the forceps. Press it firmly home. The towing hook that should be on it was missing when I acquired the truck, but I saved this one from the uh, Land Rover that I did last week because I didn't want a tow hook on the uh, Royal Navy Land Rover that you'll have seen perhaps on the previous videos. I'll fit the wheels to the uh, cab section there. They just drop in and then they're held in place by the uh, steel plate. A bit of wrestling with it, got it into place, clicked it into position. I'm going to uncouple it again then from the articulated section to uh, bend these steel tabs over to hold it into place. I've made sure I've located them. Just use a piece of wooden dowel to bend the tabs. It's much less likely to slip than pliers or anything like that. Slip metal to metal on the pliers and gouge your paint, you're not going to be too happy, are you? So uh, just keep this bit of 10mm 10, 10 dowel on the table for uh, such occasions. Uh, couple it back together again, roll it over, and then there's a, a pin that goes through the side of the truck body. It holds the base place into place and holds the wheels and the articulated section on. And that's it. Pump is put together. Just going to send it on that last little bit with the aforementioned piece of dial and a tap of the pliers. And we're done. And bonus, it's a roller. Although not especially well on a lump of velvet. Okay, quit admiring your handiwork now. And here she is. With her uh, miniature load of wire netting, fence posts and bits of cable. So what have we done with this one? Well, I've stripped it apart. Stripped the paint, recoated it with this uh, red and green variant, 
We made some little miniature rolls of wire netting and bent a post of wire to go on the back for a load. Fitted a tow hook which was missing. Put some glass in the cab because I just think it sets it off that little bit. I think it looks pretty nice. I'm sure if he was around Happy Arthur would be quite pleased to see it. While you're watching it go around and around, just another reminder if you would like to see any more of my content please do consider hitting the subscribe button and the click the hammer the bell and get notifications of uh, anything new that comes out a suggestion for one of my uh, subscribers was to include a ruler for scale on some of these things because he visited me the other day and didn't realize quite how small some of the things that I was doing were he was kind of assuming they were quite large toys and as you can see this one's six inches in old money so there you go unicorn man that's the uh... thank you all very much for watching i've been neil at lboy 59's wetworks and you've all been very patient thank you for watching bye